Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I want to show you how to do this erosion sort of destruction style effect where the shell of your object will break away to reveal what's beneath. And you can use this for obviously a model of a person, a car, a logo, anything you want. So I'm just going to show you the technique. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jesse and I've been making a lot of tutorials for Typhlo and I'll be making a lot more. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I post a new one. And as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up if you guys have been enjoying the Typhlo tutorials. So I'm working in units, decimal inches with one unit is one inch. Usually I work in centimeters, but a lot of the example files provided by Tyson, the creator of Typhlo, are in this unit system. So that's what I'm sticking with for now while I'm learning the software just like you guys. So we're going to start by creating a torus knot. Uh, and again, you can use any kind of a 3D object you want, but this one is just kind of interesting. Now, we need to create a shell around this base model that we're going to break away to reveal this blue knot. My initial approach was probably what you're thinking right now, which is to just make a copy of this, add a shell modifier, and then just do that. But what happens is they, they end up exactly on top of each other, which then messes up the physics simulation because there's a lot of intersection going on. So what we need to do is make this an editable poly first, and then go to element and select the entire element and right click and select clone and clone it as a copy. Let's call this our torus copy. So now we have two of the exact same thing on top of each other. So we're gonna select the torus copy and we can give it some other color just so that it's differentiated. So let's make that maybe orange and assign that. And then we need to go under uh, polygon, select all of the polygons and go to extrude and then extrude it along local normal and maybe extrude it about two inches and then we need to select all of the polygons on top of this extruded torus and go to detach detach as clone and say okay so now we basically have three things on top of each other so we're gonna select the it's called object 001 which is the which is what we just detached and let's give it some other color again so let's make that maybe green so i know that it may seem confusing already but basically we have the shell that's on top then we have the yellow copy and then we have the original. So the original is what we're going to reveal. This yellow one we don't need anymore. And this green one is what we're going to break away. And I'll explain why in a second. So I'm going to select this green layer and call it shell destruct because this is, this is the one that we're actually going to break away, but we need to give it some thickness. So I'm going to go under the modifier panel and just give it a shell and give that shell just one inch of thickness is fine. And then just say collapse all and convert it into an editable poly again. So let me hide this green shell destruct just for a second because we can actually delete this yellow one. We don't need it anymore. And now what we're left with, if I unhide the green one is we have this green shell and we have our original blue knot now the beautiful thing about this green shell is that it follows shape of the blue one exactly except there's basically two inches of a gap between the green one and the blue one because we extruded it by two inches so i hope that that makes sense and now let's do the tie flow setup create a tie flow so let's start by creating a birth shape and select the green shell destruct layer. Then we're going to add a Voronoi fracture. And for now you can set it to maybe a thousand fragments. And then we're going to add a physics shape and we can set the display to geometry. So at this point it's basically broken up and it just falls down and breaks. So if you're just looking for a super simple way to just break something, this is the setup for that. So it basically just breaks, falls to the ground. Now what we need to do is tell TieFlow to gradually have this breakaway and not happen all at once. So we're gonna add a physics switch operator and put it right under physics shape. And I'm going to set this to kinematic. So what is happening? Well, basically I am just telling TieFlow to take the torus fracture it and then as soon as you put this physics shape in here 
it's automatically activated. That's why it fell to the ground right away. But with the physics switch, I'm basically telling Typeflow, hey, I don't want it to be dynamic, which is the first option here. I want it to be kinematic. So the fragments are still there, but it's not being affected by gravity or anything else. So now I'm gonna add a time test in here and I'm gonna set that to a value of 50 with a 50 frame variation. And you'll see why in a second, but for now we're just gonna add another physics shape and drag it out here. And we're gonna connect that to the time test. And so now if I go through my timeline and set the display to geometry, you can see that over time, it's already falling apart. And what we can do is select that green shell torus and just hide selection. And at this point, this is basically our effect. We're just gonna refine it from here. So you can see that the blue torus beneath is being revealed as these pieces gradually fall away. So let's just extend our timeline to maybe 300 frames. And let me just explain what's happening. So basically, like I said, the physics shape activates everything right away. So all the pieces fell to the ground together. But we put this physics switch in here, which says, hey, I want you to be broken up, but I don't want you to fall to the ground until I tell you to. So we put this time test in here to say, anywhere between frame zero and 100, I want you to make these pieces dynamic again because this physics shape makes them dynamic again. So it goes from dynamic to being stopped and then anywhere in this time range, it gets activated again. So what you end up with is that over time, the pieces get activated and fall to the ground and reveal what's beneath. Now, they are falling, but they're not interacting with this tour. So we need to add another physics collision down here just to basically tell these white pieces to bounce off of this blue torus and interact with it. And I'm just gonna pick this blue torus as my physics collision object. And I'm going to set the hull type to mesh just to get more accuracy from it. So now if I show you what we have, this is very close to that final effect. All the pieces sort of crumble away. So you could basically end here. This is a pretty cool effect in its own right. Um, what I just did was I went under the main tie flow settings under physics and here you can set the default gravity to zero or you can just turn it off, which will basically give you this kind of effect, which might be cool for some type of a explosion in space in zero G. So that's something to think about. Um, but what we're going to do is add a force and put it under the physics collision. And I'm going to set the built-in wind strength to 0.1 and the built-in gravity strength to minus 0.001, which will just very subtly push the pieces back to the ground. So now what you end up with is something like this, where the pieces are being blown away. So what you can do to make sure that some of these pieces are not sticking is number one, go back to the Voronoi fracture and add more points, which will just break it up into smaller pieces and it'll make it easier for them to escape. The other thing you can do is go under force, enable turbulence and set the turbulence strength to one, which will just give them more random motion so they don't get stuck behind the torus. And then what you can do is go into the individual physics collisions and play with the restitution, which is basically bounce and then static and dynamic friction, which basically controls how much energy the particles lose when they come in contact with each other. So I think I just set the static friction to something lower like 0.2, uh, which would just make it easier for the pieces to escape sort of the pool of the object. And so this would be my final effect for this tutorial. There are a few pieces that end up being stuck down here, but that's fine. You could animate the torus to spin or you could add more forces um, depending on the specific piece of geometry that you're working with. But just wanted to show you this technique very quickly. If you found it helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Thanks very much for watching these Stifle tutorials. I'll try and make more and I'll talk to you later.